everybody, welcome to our uh, next video in our Communius Learning Series for 2020, um, A Wounded Faith, Ze uh, Zinsdorf's Theology in the 21st Century. Uh, this is video number five of six, uh, and today we are really getting into um, some of the ways that, um, that Zinsdorf's theology can connect to sort of some of the um, some of the, the strong theological streams of 20th and 21st century theology. So we're going to be taking a look maybe a little bit more at some theologians um, of this, uh, uh, of the early 1900s and, and of the last generation, and really looking at some of the themes and how they might overlap with some of Zinzendorf's core um, theology, which we've looked at over this past couple uh, videos in our discussion last time as well. So how the, how does this wounds theology really um, really impact, uh, or or maybe a good way to say it would be, how does this wounds theology, um, what how can it grow um, theology from where it's at now, and in in really healthy and helpful ways, and maybe add some things that haven't been emphasized in theology or or strengthened um, some of the conversations in theology today. So let's just dive right into it. Um, the title of this of this talk is uh, "What Zinzendorf Might Say Today: uh, Wounds Theology in the Twenty First Century." And so, <clears throat> as we mentioned before, uh, we know wounds theology really is this um, is this this deep incarnational theology that sees these wounds of Christ as our primary way of connecting to God, um, not just through Christ wounds, but finding ourselves and our own woundedness. In the woundedness of God and the woundedness of Christ, and I wanted to sort of um, it, get us back into it by thinking of this idea of God suffering alongside of us, and this being the real connection point, or, or one of the major connection points that I would argue that brings Zinzendorf's wounds theology into some of what where thinkers uh, and theologians are, are wrestling with today, um, and and also not just that, but what are the what are the what are the main things going on in in society and culture that theology needs to respond to? Because as we talked about in the in the first video where we, we talked about this disconnect between theology and faith now, um, the, you know that the, we're seeing the symptoms of that, right? We're, we're, we can look at things like declining church membership and we can look at um, these metrics, but these don't these just tell us these are these are symptomatics. These don't tell us, um, these don't tell us where, uh, what's disc, we, this just shows us that there is a disconnection. It doesn't tell us what it is. This is what it requires the work of theology and discernment and thinking and, um, being in the world, um, and understanding the world in order to connect to how, where, finding where that disconnect lies. So that's what we're going to do a little bit today is, is examining more where that disconnect is and what might be a connection point. And um, as I would like to argue in, in this Communius Learning Series, that it is a wounded faith that we should be after, not a triumphalistic or a, um, an, a faith that offers an assurance. Um, the, the assurance is the wounds. It's not that it doesn't offer us any assurance, but the assurance that it does offer is one that, um, that is a bit paradoxical, uh, that is a bit counterintuitive. And so, uh, so God, God suffering alongside of us um, and through us in the, in the person of Christ, if this is this connection point, then I want to kind of bring us back into it with a quote. Um, so I left off last, last week with a quote from Jürgen Moltmann's book, The Crucified God, and I want to sort of pick back up with a different quote, and that'll be sort of our springboard. And this one actually, um, it's a little bit longer, so stay, so stay with me. Um, and I, I'll try to unpack it, but I think it's important because um, here Moltmann actually makes a direct connection to Zinzendorf. <clears throat> so uh, he says, A God who is conceived of in his omnipotence, perfection, and infinity at man's expense cannot be God who is love in the cross of Jesus, who makes a human encounter in order to restore their lost humanity to unhappy and proud divinities, who became poor to make many rich. God conceived of at man's expense cannot be the father of Jesus Christ. Zinzendorf saw this rightly 
when he complained of the legalistic and servile situation of the human race in face of God. So-called Christianity has preserved the princely idea of God and blotted out the idea of the Lamb, his merit, and his death. And that last part was a direct quote that Moltmann was quoting from Zinzendorf. And so I want to unpack this a little bit um, and use this as a, as a way to sort of talk about um, theology in the 20th and, 20, 20th and 21st century. So in this quote, Moltmann is driving the, 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 a similar point home that, he, that we talked about in the, in the last video, that um, for the way Jesus shows us God in that Jesus is, shows us weakness on the cross and uh, suffering on the cross. So in this quote, he, Moltmann is pointing out how if we build, if we give up, if we give up our humanity, or if we give up God's humanity at the expense of trying to, to save a, um, a powerful, omniscient um, um, God of strength, then what we sacrifice is the cross. What we, what we lose is Christ on the cross, because you can't have both of those, according to Moltmann. And Moltmann is also saying that this is what Zinzendorf saw as well. This is what Zinzendorf saw in his time as one of the main um, the main struggles that he was fighting against, which we talked about in in previous videos too. When when Moltmann or when Zinzendorf was responding to uh, what uh, what we called a um, a sort of static or stale, disconnected church of his time. And how that was related to his the Pietist movement and his influence in Pietism, but also how Zinzendorf carved out something that was very different. And so, um, similarly, Moltmann is picking up on something like Zinzendorf, where there was this issue in in the in the going around at the time of this disconnect between the way people are con the way the church and many Christians and theologians are conceiving of God and the experience of people. And, um, and again, this is Zinzendorf. This is the same quote. The so-called Christianity, so he's there, even in that there's a little shot at it's not really Christianity, has preserved the princely idea of God. So this idea of God away and distant and, and powerful and um, untouchable and in control and going to, um, going to be on our side and win our battles for us. Um, this princely God, this mighty God. Um, so he's saying that so-called Christianity has preserved this, but it has blotted out, meaning it's ignored, it's covered over, it's erased the idea of the lamb, his merit, and his death. And in the image of the lamb, you see the image of sacrifice. You see the image of, um, of humility. And for Zinzendorf, this... Uh, this this humility is also part of, of being human. It is it is a it is a humility of existence, not a humility of um, that God took on temporarily in order to sort of like fix the problem, and then He went back to being this princely God. Um, but there is something foundational and at the core of God that is um, that is this that is the Lamb, and. So that brings me, uh, so th here we see, in that we see this importance of this, of this type of incarnation and theology of the cross, this, the, uh, the need for, uh, for this conception of God that is um, one of weakness, not strength. And that, um, I think that can really speak to and resonate with some of the, um, some of the, the tensions that, that we feel as, 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 as humans, as, as people um, in the 21st, particularly 21st century in the West, particularly grow, you know, an, an American westernized experience cr creates certain anxieties and tensions um, that, that, that need to, that need to be resolved or, or, or we just, we, we feel stuck. We feel trapped. We feel entangled um, in this, something that we need freedom from, we need salvation from. And another theologian, uh, another major theologian of the 20th century was a guy um, by the name of Paul Tillich. And he wrote a book, um, he wrote a few books, but this, he, this book is called The Courage to Be. And in this book, he identifies 
what he calls three major anxieties um, in the human condition and the human existence. And obviously there are there are more than three anxieties. But what Tillich is doing is creating three broad um, categories that really encapsulate human um, can encapsulate all of a lot of what humans experience. And so he classifies these these three categories of anxieties as one, an anxiety of fear of fate and death. So of just the the anxiety of that we are a finite beings that will die, um, that we don't last forever, which we an anxiety that we still have. Um, then he identifies the anxiety of guilt and condemnation, this feeling that we um, are are guilty in need of 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 um, of, 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 of of some sort of um, uh, salvation. And then the other one that he identifies is the anxiety of um, of he describes it as a meaninglessness, the anxiety of meaninglessness, and um, and he uh, what Tillich identifies and sort of talking about this, he says through di throughout different points in human history, different these different anxieties may have been emphasized more over. At more at more at certain times and, and more at other times. So he he talks about um, at certain times the the Christian message was really directed at the at the uh, anxiety of fee, uh, of fate and death. Um, what happens when you die and and give, bringing assurance to that. Um, there are other times where the the Christian message really emphasized guilt and condemnation. What does the cross say about guilt and condemnation? And then what Tillich is arguing is that the the current state. Where we, and I would he was writing in the 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 you know um, this was written I think in the sixties I uh, know fifty two was when nope sixty five um, was when this was written um, and he was a uh, Tillich was a chaplain in World War One was uh, exiled from Germany in World War Two um, by the Nazi Party so saw a lot of of lived a lot of life and experience. Um, and he identifies that that meaninglessness is the big anxiety of um, of, of of today of, of his time, and I would argue still today now that's one of the big um, the 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 sort of meaning and purpose is one of the great anxieties that um, that we still feel. And if you look at sort of where what people are wrestling with, you know, um, our, our current state of of economics of jobs. Of higher education, of um, of things like mental mental health, anxieties, depressions, all of these rates are going up, and people are fe feeling this this um, this anxiety of purpose and meaninglessness. Uh, and so, what Tillich is saying is, we need a way to um, we need a way to address this anxiety. That's what that's what theology does. That's what the message of the gospel does. And so for Tillich, it is, it is trusting in a God like one like Moltmann described, not a God of um, assurance, but one that is, um, that is suffering alongside of us. And, and because of that, um, what is required is to act in courage because trusting in this God, tr trusting in a suffering God means that we have, we have assurance, we have, we have confidence in something, but that confidence um, requires a courage in that God to act, and he. This is from uh, this is from from Tillich's book. He says, um, "Every act of courage is a manifestation of the ground of being, however the questionable the content may be. There are no valid arguments for the existence of God, but there are acts of courage in which we affirm the power of being, whether we know it or not." And so what Tillich is calling for here is not a, it's not a passive intellectual faith, um, but one that, uh, one that recognizes that, that just like Zinzendorf did, that it's not about arguing the right facts about God, but it's about acting in the courage of a wounded Christ, acting in the courage of a wounded God. And he goes on to say uh, at the very end of the book, the courage to be is rooted in the God who appears, when God has disappeared in the anxiety of doubt. So what Tillich is offering here is, is not a running away from the anxieties of doubt and meaninglessness, 
um, but a way to step into them in order to find meaning in them, not to dismiss them, but to embrace the woundedness and to confront the meaninglessness with, uh, alongside of a God who is there with us. And so that's a little, that sort of, uh, I want to pick out some themes of theology from the 21st century, um, 20th and 21st century. And then um, in the next session, we're really going to talk about what are some ways we can turn this into a practice. How can we live as a church of the wounded, uh, a church uh, centered on a faith in a wounded God and a wounded Christ? Uh, so thank you for joining in. Again, I'm looking forward to our discussion. Uh, and grace and peace, everybody. Bye.